Hey, good morning. Hope you're all happy and well, and this video finds you in a good place. So what are we talking about today? Well, today we're going to be talking about my 2x72, this here being the prototype you're looking at. Um, like I've said in other videos, I've made a couple, and this is the one I use, and this is what I've come to. The main subject today is going to be the uh, tracking mechanism, what I've come up with, um, with a bit of research and looking online and stuff like that. But this is what works for me now. And I'm just going to give a brief run through about how it works and what I've done and things I've got. You can see on here, this one here, if you can see in the close up photos, is I've just put together a bit of stainless and a bit of off cuts and stuff I had and I've refined it a little bit. So, yeah, the last or the first one I made was a different design. I used a spring at the back instead of that. So I've gone to a strut for this here. It's a simple construction just angle iron and box section and a few bolts so that goes up and down the old wheel here as you know you probably can't see that but if you can that goes up and down I've got a bolt in here which uh, pardon me the bolt in here which goes in and out um, to be quite honest hard to ever use that and I'll explain that in a minute but and what I've added is one up here so I think you call it dual axle tracking this one here is a 6mm and now I've gone to 8 with a uh, rod end on it which I'll show you in a minute. So yeah, let's get into it, let's have a bit of a dive into this and um, talk about what we've got going on. So now we're looking at it from the back of the machine just to get a bit of closer of what we actually got going on. Um, so you can see here the top piece and I'll go over the parts a little bit more detail in a minute but this top piece here is just a bit of flat bar. So this piece here now I make this out of angle iron, under there I've welded a bit, so it goes on there. So basically this is a hinge, got an 8mm bolt through there, and these here I've just drilled out, put a bit of round bar, and put the 8mm bolt through, and the hinge piece on the bottom so that lifts up if you can see it. That's a 4 inch tracking wheel, <coughs> which is crowned, which I made up and spaced, so it works in there pretty good. Um, this screw here which I've got a locking butterfly nut on it to lock it in because what I normally do is a lot of machines you'll use this for your tracking normally now what I'll do is I'll just get this wheel level I get this wheel level with the machine and then I'll lock that one in there and all the tracking I do is with this this here makes it go that way and that's all the tram I use for tracking. It's a very slight amount of turning you need, but that's all I'll use. Um, that there, I've just welded a nut on there, put a bolt for it, and made up this little bracket here. So there's another nylock stuck on the end of that, and a butterfly nut welded to that. So it's minimal use, um, not minimal use, it's actually a very small adjustment there. I'll probably show that at the end of the video. Quite often you'll see me reaching up when I'm uh, doing bevels or grinding rough shapes. You'll see me reach up and just tweak the belt so I get it off the edge of the platen and this is all I use. So that's that. So from here I think we'll go over to the bench and we'll have a look at the parts. We'll take one to bits and get a bit of a run through on that. So those are the parts pretty much. And here's one assembled up, another one. You've got your hinge and your wheel, your wheel's taped up because it's new. Like I said, I'm running a four inch tracking wheel. Um, I tend to make them about 65 wide, just so I've got a bit of room for the wheel to, uh, the belt to move around on, so forth and so on. So that's one assembled up. So you can saw on the other model there, just over there on the prototype, that I made the main arm up out of um, bits of off cutter stainless I had. But what I've gone to here, this is mild steel angle iron which would have been about 65 or 70 by 50 and I've shaped it up into what I want it's oh, I don't know 230 something long millimeters so I've got it there so that down the bottom this is where it fixes to the machine on a bit of 40 by 40 box and of course that's your adjustment hole there for the bottom part and that's where we put the top on on here I've made up this, if you can see it in here, and that takes the dual actual part on the top. I've gone to 8mm now on the top, just make it a little bit bigger. 
that's that part there. So of course the wheel attaches to the hinge, which I've got here. And what I've got, this is uh, 50 flat bar by 6, oh, the angle iron 6mm thick too as well. So that's my two hinges, I've made them up. And what I've got is round bar in here and I've drilled them out for the 8mm bolt, put them in and so they hinge. And I've welded that up. On this end here, I, um, you look at the other one, you can see I've just got a bolt and a nut. I was actually welding up a roll cage in someone's car and I looked in the front of the car and they had a heap of these rod ends and I thought yeah that's probably a better way to go. Having said that, after I made this and put it together I went online and had a look at some other people's ideas and um, they're using rod ends as well. So I've used that just for a bit of adjustment because naturally when it's on the thing it turns like this so it needs to have a bit of adjustment there. On this end I've just got a 12mm bolt to go through my wheel and I've just shaped it a bit on the bottom and welded it in. There's a few tacks there to hold it in and that works pretty good, never had a problem with that. And so I'm good, you do need to space it. A uh, point I will note is I have used on some of my other wheels, I've used these nylon or teflon spacers and one wheel I machined, I don't machine them anymore, I get them made because my machining is not the best. One wheel got a little bit hot and the teflon melted into the bearing and ruined it. So what I use now is I use these galv washers, I'll just grab one out, galvanised washers, 3mm thick and they can handle the heat or anything else that goes on. I don't have any trouble with my wheels heating up now because like I said I get them professionally made. So I've moved on to do that. So in here I've got my um, this here will go under there. That's the 10 mil. No, oh, it's not going in. There it is. And put a little little wigwam or whatever you call that on the end of it. And that's, that's your adjustment. And like I said, I normally get it level with the machine and then I lock it in with the butterfly nut. So that's all cool. So basically what happens is the hinge goes on the top there like that. You need to screw that into there first. And all that is is a bolt through there with a nylock on there to hold that in place. I will normally put a washer in between here, like so, and then all it is is a 12mm bolt through the top. I might not get that nut on with that, yes I will. If I could pick the washer up, I could put it on. I'll get there. I'm just trying to do it with the camera in my face, but there we go. So that screws on. You get it nice and snug with a nylock, so there, and now we've got that going on. So that adjusts, as you can see. And that's the basics of it. And that's how it works. And then I'll put my spaces in if I've got one there. It is. Um, whether you use one washer on there or you use two washers, it all depends on the machine and how you set it up. I normally just put two on there, put the wheel on, and away we go. Put a nylock on the end. What I have had happen, due to the fact the wheel what I've found is any wheels on that side of the machine going that way, these nuts tend to come loose. Nine times out of ten. So what I also do is use these half nuts or cinch nuts or 
whatever they call them. If I can get one out of this bag. I just lock it with another nut. You've probably seen on my prototype machine, I've just got actually big nuts. They work, it works really good, but it just looks a bit silly, in my opinion. But there we go, so I just stick them on underneath or on top or whatever to hold that on. And that's the basics of it. Oh, oh there we go. That'll be in tighter there. And that's the basics of it. So this way here, Of course everything will be tightened up. That way there, like I said, I just lock in level with the machine and all the tracking's just done with this. And it's very minimal, you just very, very minimal turning. So with that said, that's the parts. Any questions or anything you want to know about it, just let me know in the comments. I do have some drawings for my machines, just rough PDFs. Anybody wanted to have a look at those, we can negotiate a cheap price for them. Um, but yeah, that's what works for me and that's what I put on my machine. So let's go to the machine and I'll just, we'll have a quick look at the function. So what you're looking at here is the uh, prototype. First one of these White Lewis Jane Mark 1s that I built. And over here is the second one. Or I've ironed out most of the problems, probably all of them. Got it working a lot better. And this one here is, uh, yeah, good, good machine. It's not finished yet, needs a motor. Um, you can buy it if you want. Just let me know, see what we can do. Um, yeah, so that works pretty good. This here is the arm that fits on the machine that the tracking mechanism goes in. It's just 40 by 40 by four, I think, box section. And a bit of flat bar on the side. So it just sits in there and hinges up and down, as you can see. So that's all good, it works really well. So like I'm saying, I get the, uh, the wheels level with the machine and then all the tracking is done on this. One thing you do need to keep in mind, so when you're going forward, you'll be going that way. When you turn the machine around and you're going in reverse, you've got to track it the other way, that's got to go the other way. On my prototype machine, I don't know really what happened, it still goes in reverse really, really good, it just doesn't track quite the same. This machine here, I got it right, this is what I do now, it's pretty good. I can put a belt on because I have run it with that motor just to try it and it'll, uh, you can get it tracking in forward, you can put it in reverse and it'll just, you don't have to worry about tracking at all. So that's a little bit on that. You can also note a few improvements I made with the second machine. And you note this table was actually the table thing I put it on at the bottom, the frame, it's too high, so I've lowered that to a better position. Anyway, that's another story for another video. So we'll move in a bit closer and we'll have a look at the uh, tracking on this. So you put the belt on with the normal procedure, as you do, as you can go, if you can see that in the video, you can see the top wheel here. Um, like I said before, and sometimes I move that off the platen for different reasons, but there we go. So we'll fire it up, I'll turn the VFD down a little bit. So it's not too noisy, down to, oh, I don't know, whatever, and we'll get it a run and you'll see how it tracks. Like I say, I've said it probably 10 times, that's level with the machine. So I don't adjust this bottom one here anymore, so I'll give that a run. So you can hear that now, we turn there, not even a quarter of a turn. You can take it almost on, on there and just tweak that a little bit. Oops, there's a bit of slop in there, but there isn't in the new one. Tweak it there a bit. And yeah, minimal adjustment. That works really good. And that's all there is to it. Turn that off. So there you have it, we'll wrap it up there, a little bit of a brief overview of the White Lewis Jane tracking mechanism that I put on my uh, 2x72 grinders. So I hope you've enjoyed that and um, you might have learned something, you might not. Anything else you want to know just let me know in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. So there you go, again, I hope this video finds you safe and well and everybody's happy.